Namaste. I'm Kamala Devi, and today I want to talk about jealousy. So this is one of my favorite topics, and I haven't actually spoken into it in a few seasons. Um, and that by that I mean like there's been cycles, and I've learned a lot, and I want to share with you at the kind of the frothy edge of what I'm understanding right now. Um, and so I want to start by saying there's a, you know, an ideal or um, this like this high consciousness kind of um, vision of, especially amongst those of us who are in open relationships or freedom-based relationships of like, hey, enlightened relating means that I want for you and I support um, what your uh, path is and I, I trust your magnetism. I want you to have like various, you know, freedom in, of your expression. And I also want to be, you know, full and whole in myself, in my center. I want to be, um, you know, happy for you because I'm so abundant and full and know myself. Um, and this comes from, you know, of course, these, this foundation of self-love, this foundation of knowing yourself and, and, and being in touch with unconditional love and, um, and getting, really securely that there is no replacement for who you are in the world. There's no um, competition, you know, that you're truly a unique flower or a unique, you know, emanation of the divine. And there's no way that that could be compared. And so at the high level, we can conceptually, <laughs> most of us be like, yeah, that's what I'm striving for. That's what I want. Um, or we can see the ideal in that. Um, and then there's this other reality, which is simultaneously true that we're in these animal bodies that have, um, like the deep need for security. And if, and if like, you know, there's an animal that's like, that's my mate and I, I, I and I need this for certainty or security or, um, like, even if you try to take, you know, like food from a dog, how a dogs like, you know, like this is mine. And that's that like impulse to protect what's ours is uh, hardwired into, you know, the DNA of this animal. And, and it's more than that too. There's also like the wounded little child and there's the abandonment and the scarcity and the, you know, we live in this competitive culture that has all kinds of programming, not to mention like a, a bombardment of Hollywood and media and Disney, like all about, we've got this like, total mass hypnosis about what love is supposed to look like, you know, this one and only. And so, you know, there's the programming and the animal and there's the wounding here. And then there's the consciousness and the ideal and the fantasy um, here. And sometimes that creates a fracture, right? That can actually create a split where you're like, I get it, but I'm not, but, but it's not congruent with how I'm actually feeling. And the feelings that arise when we're jealous it can be so primal, so deep, like it can be inside out and feel like we're, um, you know, going to vomit and, and just, just like, we don't want to exist anymore. Like it's really intense and really core. And, you know, what I want to shift, um, is, and it's, it's really like a reorientation towards jealousy itself, because that, when that, internal demonic feeling comes up and it feels so base and so animal there's a tense tendency to demonize it and to feel like okay this is the beast that i don't want to feel so i'm going to like put it in a cage i'm going to like try to um, limit it or control it or even try to like make agreements with my partner so that i don't have to feel those feelings and that's you know one way of trying to handle it and it's a flawed way because you know, we know that people in, you know, deeply monogamous committed relationships still feel, you know, jealous and insecure and jealous, like all kinds of envy. And um, so it doesn't like, you know, putting more restrictions on the relationship may be a temporary like crutch or a, um, a stopgap so that we can like feel and, uh, you know, get caught up with ourselves or, or not have to go through those feelings. But um, it in terms of long-term growth towards, you know, these 
more the more enlightened free love ideal it's um uh you know it's almost like putting away your teacher and this is the radical reorientation is that jealousy is not a monster it's actually a pointing out instruction you know at the core <laughs> <laughs> and what I really feel this like when jealousy arises it's like a guru saying this is what's unhealed in you this is what where your insecurities lie these are the false beliefs these are the um, the areas where you need to grow or work and that in and of itself you know if we're truly on a path towards you know knowing ourselves and being that in the world then we want to like experience the the shadow experience the the depths and we want to experience it in a way that's digestible because if you have like a guru who's just going to like tear you apart and show you everything that's wrong with you you'd have like you know like be in a perpetual dark night of the soul and not actually come through um so you know i do feel that like working with jealousy as a teacher in proportion to what you can actually digest and work on and handle and come back to center and come back to ease is part of the the balance and the trick um, and this is particularly challenging because for some people um, their capacity it's like bring it on I can handle a lot I can metabolize it I can digest it I can move it and 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 truly what I feel you know especially after 20 years of being in open relating you know or longer like my metabolism is is higher and when I get jealous, I recover quicker. I have more tools for it. It's like an easier like path. I actually embrace it. Um, but in the beginning, it takes a while and it takes us out and it's like being sick and we have to be really gentle with ourselves and we need to like understand that, that, that it takes time and presence and sensitivity. Um, so, you know, part of it's learning the balance of how much we can actually handle. Um, and you know, because some of us feel so out of control, you know, it's to, to get the empowerment of like, hey, I'm choosing the circumstances, the situations, the relationships that are honoring to my pace or my rate or, um, and, and that can be really challenging because sometimes there's this gap, right? Where like, we choose someone who's, um, moving at a different speed or has a different calling or has other lovers that we, we don't get along with or that inherently challenge us and then we might need to take a pause or a break or slow down and, and do more self-care and that that question of partner selection like that just oh that like, like hits to the core because the reason we're jealous is because our bond is threatened you know the the reason we're jealous is because we care about this person and there's a preciousness to that connection and we don't want to lose it so the alarm system's going off saying uh oh alarm threat you know I feel like I'm gonna lose it whether that's perceived or real it's still you know scary stuff you have to move through to come back into love and can you move through it you know at a rate that is healthy where you're like okay I'm back in ease I'm back in love um you know and I, I really like to look at the ratio of um, how much challenge there is to ease and you know it's especially because what we're doing is more love what we're doing is being lovers who want to nourish each other and not um, you know poison each other and so it's this um, you know deep challenge between like can we attune can we trust in love can we lean into love can we come back to love can we move at a pace that is honoring of of you know everyone and not restrict and challenge and like leash each other because that also doesn't serve love like when we put restrictions or somebody like minimizes their attractions to others or their you know freedom in order to tend to someone else they lose their center and go codependent you know so we're in this dance <laughs> and in a sense you know again the, you know it's about this bond but it's more importantly about you know finding our sovereign center finding the pace at which we can learn and grow not over stretching ourselves so that we fracture because we think we want to be here but really our animal has some work to do 
Um, and, you know, it's an ongoing dance to get like into congruence, like where am I the yes and, and feeling aligned and also feeling abundant. And one of the real key things about the animal is that when you're nourished, when you're in abundance, when you're in, um, like it's almost like when there's a tree that's fruiting and it has plenty, right? When there's um, a lot of fruit, you want it like, it's like you can share. Um, and you're happy to see others like feasting and your belly is full, so you're happy. But if you're in deficiency, malnourished, and your reserves are low and you're feeling lack, there's no way to be happy for another. There's no way to be celebrating them because you're like your own animals, like that dog that's like, ah, that's mine. <laughs> so really the key is how to stay in your abundance, how to stay nourished, how to stay in love, um, so that then when you're feeling full, you can celebrate and share with others um, and bless them in their path. Um, and that practice of staying full is not just self-love, but it's noticing when triggers arise, how you can clear them, come back to love as soon as possible. So I've given kind of a allegorical overview, and I hope you recognize yourself in this um, and really invite you to take jealousy on like a teacher and say, wow, if I'm on a path towards spiritual relating and enlightened you know, connection, then I really want to see and know what illusions, what emotions, what you know, wounding is going to come up. And I want to do that work. So I'm not going to avoid the jealousy. I'm actually going to lean in. And on the other side of that, is is realizing you know that my true nature is love that who i am as an expression of the divine can't be compared or taken from or you know ultimately can't be you know heartbroken because <laughs> as our heart breaks open we realize there's more mm -hmm. more space for the divine to come through and i know that's a steep like learning curve um but i bless you on the path and look forward to connecting more soon.